Oh, hello. Hello again. At long last, look, here's George as well, contented in the garden. It's been such a long time since we've met. I'm sorry it's been such a delay. Of course, I've been off in the States. Indeed, you found me there. And then do come in. I'm back. It's warm enough. I'm back in the Temple of Peace. Look at this beautiful garden, that little uh, circular bed with the different roses in it and other plants that Maggie's made for me to contemplate. Maybe George will stay contented in the sun or maybe he'll join us, but come in. I've got something nice to share with you. Um, you have a seat. <clears throat> now, this is a new acquisition, so I'm sorry. This is Peterson have just come up with this. It's a new series called Bard, the Bard Pipe. And uh, it's based on the slightly, it's like a demi church warden. The slightly longer stem pipes that the sort of local orator at his particular corner in the pub telling his fireside tales might well have smoked. So it's very appropriate because I'm going to go into slightly barred light mode with you. Anyway, so you caught up with me at the Wade Centre, which was lovely, and you saw the wardrobe. But we weren't able to meet after that. I had a whole series of engagements in America. And then almost as soon as I came back, I was off to Cambridge doing some things uh, in Holy Week at King's College. And then, um, then I had a lovely holiday in Yorkshire. Got back and then I got COVID. So I've been rather laid low and I'm now just beginning the recovery and up on my feet again. I tested negative for the second time yesterday. But it's lovely to welcome you back. Anyway, one of the things that cheered me when I kind of got up out of my COVID bed, as it were, was the arrival of this book. The Lost Tales of Sir Galahad. It very beautifully produced in lovely kind of leather effect, red leather, gold lettering. And you will see that it is full of the most beautiful woodcuts. All by Ned Bustard, who uh, is also a contributor to some of the stories in here. And um, let's just show you a few of the others. Wonderful. Um, both full page ones and also occasional ones illustrating. There's the illustration for my own contribution. There's a wonderful one. Oh, look at this. This is great. A phoenix. They're really, in the same way, very simple, but they're very beautiful designs. They have a very heraldic feel, but also it is appropriate, but also a kind of ancient feel. But there's a lot of humour in them as well, like that one, Sir Galahad and the Boy. So, how is it that I come to have this? Well, it's published by The Rabbit Room, of whom I've told you occasionally. Well, it's a particularly significant book, this, for me, because um, I had an invitation from the Rabbit Room to see if I would like to contribute to a, a book they were going to publish called The Lost Tales of Galahad. And the idea behind the book was a really simple one, but very, very um, enticing. So there's a passage which they cite to uh, Howard Pyle's retelling of the Arthur stories, but in fact it's a direct quotation from Mallory, and it goes like this. Oh, hello, George, you're going to come and join us for the stories? That's good. You're a good boy, George. Now it goes, now after Sir Galahad had smitten down Sir Lancelot, as aforetold of, he rode for a long while in a wild forest, and had many adventures of diverse sorts, of which no account hath been given, though mention is made of them in the ancient histories of those things which I have read. So the remit to all of us as writers was, imagine you could tell us one of those lost tales of Galahad. And as long as it's about Galahad, and it's recognisably the Galahad of the whole Arthurian cycle, but it must not be anything that you would find in Mallory or any of the other sources. It can't be part of the quest for the Holy Grail, although it may mention that. It can't be one of the direct stories. It's other adventures of Galahad. It happened when this invitation arrived that I had just settled myself to the long postponed act of um, having to fill in my tax returns. I was looking for any form of distraction. So this was a particularly attractive one. And I thought, well, I, one day I know I want to talk right seriously about Galahad. I want to 
I want to to take up the Arthurian material, take up the tale, but I wasn't. I'd never been sure how to do it. Anyway, thinking, well, this is not my big project. This will just be something of a diversion. I decided to have a go at the ballad form, and I wrote um, the ballad of Galahad and the Naiad, which, in fact, I've I've read to you in the past and sent it off, and they liked it. And because that went so fully and freely, and because it really seemed to flow, I realised I'd found my form, and that with many other variations, I would be able to take up the tale as I'd always intended. But this, if you like, was the pebble that loosened the landslide, or the little undamming of the stream to change metaphors that allowed the whole thing to flow. Undamming of the stream is perhaps a better metaphor since there's a stream in my story, which is clogged and then cleared. And actually, that's what happened for my own imagination and my own creative flow. So you've since heard me read in this very, um, this very writing part some of the uh, the further stories. But um, and indeed, I'm going to include the Galahad and the Nine story that I wrote for this book in my later Arthurian books, and they may they may well be published by the same people. Um, so I've been not only enjoying finding my own story in here. But I've been dipping in and out of the other ones, and um, there's some superb ones in here. Uh, there's a very fine writer called Junius Johnson, who's also a great expert on scholastic philosophy and writes very well, does quite a lot of internet things about, about Tolkien and, and Lewis and so on. And he's got a one in here called Galahad and the Menagerie of Light, which is really beautiful. There's one by Andrew Peterson, uh, Galahad and the Plumed Knight. Andrew Peterson, of course, is a kind of uh, kind of great figure within the Rabbit Room who uh, who, who helped get the whole thing together. Um, and um, yeah, there's quite a list of, of writers here, uh, some of whom I know, some of whom I'm looking forward to uh, to to reading more from. Annie Nardone, I know her her work. Um, so there's lots at uh, Judith Miller. Oh, wonderful Ned Busted himself, who does all the, all the woodcuts. So I thought I'd share this with you, and um, I think it's all you know available through the Rabbit Room and on the internet. But although you will have heard it, it's so much uh, such fun to read it in its proper form from the book when it's you know you could sit down there with each other and you could open up and it's all beautifully printed. So um, with your indulgence, I might just read you the opening of my Ballad of Sir Galahad and the Naiad. The other really nice thing about this book. There's an introduction by Jennifer Tratton, and she creates a whole supposal, which is that uh, the Lost Tales were literally lost, like lost manuscripts, and that a, 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 an old bust is, is falls and broken open in the, in the basement of a, of a museum or a library, and inside the bust are the scrolled up manuscripts of these 22 or 24 tales, and then so. They're presented as though they were a scholarly discovery of ancient manuscripts. And so there are little footnotes and, and um, uh, you know, references back and forth explaining what's going on. And all done in a quite sort of light-hearted way. So it's, it's great fun. Anyway, uh, just as a tavern, tavern storyteller might uh, take us up and relight his pipe. I'll do the same. So it is, uh, you, you'll have heard this before, but indulge me in it. So Galahad and the Naiad, what fun to read it from such a lovely book. Young Galahad went riding by through forests waste and wild, courageous as a golden lion and tender as a child. His jet black steed would tread so fine it scarcely pressed the ground. Its harness lay so sleek and soft it scarcely made a sound. And as he rode the forest tracks by sun or moonlight pale, he searched the wild wood all around for glimpses of the grail. He saw the white heart's silhouette against the brightening east and hoped to find some word or sign, some clue from bird or beast, some word or sign, some clue divine, some glimmer beckoning, some token of the holy grail to make his heart take wing. He saw the white heart's silhouette against the golden west but still no sight, no earthly light to lead him on his quest. And then he heard the lovely sound of ripples running clear. He was as glad to find a stream as any running deer. 
He left his weary steed to graze and laid his shield, laid down his shield and sword and stooped to bring drink from out the brook that babbled o'er the ford. But even as he touched the stream, he heard a maiden sing. Her melody was half divine, her words all sorrowing. Her melody was half divine, her song was all too brief. Young Galahad had never heard such loveliness in grief. He raised his head and saw the maid as in some living dream, all clothed in flowing green and blue, the spirit of the stream. All clothed in flowing blue and green and lovely as the dawn, as though the living stream itself had taken human form. And if you want to know what happens next, we can't remember from last time and how she speaks of her distress and the terrible enchanter and the pollution of the stream and the need to set it free and how he takes the first part of her quest to defeat the enchanter but how she must complete the quest in another magical way herself. That's all told in the following pages. And there it is. And it'll be on somebody's shelf and perhaps taken down and enjoyed long after I'm gone. That's one of the lovely things about books and having books in the world is that they, they last longer than we do and our voice and vision can echo on a little bit longer. Anyway, it's a great pleasure to meet up with you again and I hope our meetings will be more regular. But having said that, unbelievably, I'm going back to the States. I'm actually flying out on Tuesday and I'll be gone till about the 9th of June. Maybe you'll be able to catch up with me there, somewhere there or in Canada, but otherwise we'll meet again when I come back and either in my study or in this, this temple of peace, as I call it, this lovely writing hut. Uh, thanks for dropping around. <laughs>